We have the select board meeting uh, November 8th. Uh, full agenda here tonight. Uh, first item, approval minutes of October 25th. I move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Uh, next item, comments from the public. Anybody? Comments, Dan? Uh, just a quick one. I, I noticed we can use our emergency management uh, townwide robocall system to make sure our water bills are paid on time, yeah. but we don't use it to notify residents of another break in, be vigilant, watch your neighbor's house. You know, I, I, I don't understand why we don't utilize that more for what I would consider important stuff. Well, the transfer station comment was on there too. Well, so, so we use it for I, think, I think Dan's point yeah. is that, that, that we, we use it for any number of things, not necessarily yeah. always for emergency management. Yeah. And the fact that there's been another break in in town, and, and the only place you hear about it is at the transfer station, speaking of which. I didn't even know about that. So. Yeah, I rest my case. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, do we have any sort of system where. Uh, Citizen can submit an, an idea. I, I think it's because it occurred to nobody yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess I would. How about the chief of police? It, it should be a conversation that I, be, I can have with with Chief Savini, whether and and I want his input as right. to well, as to whether he thinks that it's a prudent idea. Yeah. He, he, he does put stuff on Facebook. Not of course it's not a robocall, but yeah. Stuff and and, and, about and that page needs to be updated on a more frequent basis. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll talk to I'll talk to the chief. It's, it's just a thought, right? But yeah. we might. I mean, we've only had the the ability to do that for a couple of years. So, and then every time you turn around, you're hearing of a new thing that oh man, that'd be really great to get that news out by a robocall. So some of it's just because we haven't. It's it's relatively new, and I don't know if we have really any kind of mechanism where someone can submit something and say, hey, can we get this out? In a robocall, it's really just been handled within the office. We're such a small town that that's not been. But I guess maybe the person who actually makes the robocalls is Lynn. Right. I guess, is it possible to just ask her, um, what does she think about um, trying to, like, what, what would be a reasonable sort of system for someone who thinks, hey, we should get that out on a robocall to call in, whether they're a citizen of the town, is some, is some town related, should we have any guidelines as to, well, what goes in, you know, if it's crime related, maybe it should be through the police chief, maybe it's, we're not selling advertising time to companies, I mean, we can have policies like that, I think, um, if we, because uh, I think it's, it's such a, I mean, we pay the same whether we use it or not, right? Correct. We pay the same for, if we call everybody every day, every day. <laughs> it would be really annoying, but it would cost us the same as calling people once a month. That's my, that's my Well, concern. right, but <laughs> yeah. my concern would be twofold. A, you don't want to call people as, you want to keep it as infrequent as possible because... Right. Oh, it, oh, oh, no, absolutely. No right. But, but, but to, to reach the but, balance... But I, right, right, but I would argue yeah. that we don't want the general public to think because they have, it's their, they think it's a good idea, there may be a variety of reasons why it's not a good idea to put out a, right. a call. Yeah, yeah. Um, so think, that's why I think we might think about a policy, see if there's any other towns that have a policy or a mechanism. Um, we haven't really needed one because we're small, but maybe it's time to. Yeah. But the, the other thing, like Dan is. Yeah, to, to remember, that doesn't reach everybody in town, so you're, you know, you got to do more than just the robocall. If it's something urgent like the police do, they, they do something about break-ins on Facebook and even on the town, even on the town, I know, even on the town website, but still you're not going to get everybody because not everybody has a computer either. So and then all the water bills be paid. <laughs> yeah, right. Actually, they won't be. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's not going to... Somebody gonna, will forget. Reach everybody all the time when things come up, I guess, but we could try. Okay. Anything else in the public? Okay, moving on to the next item, tax classification hearing for fiscal year 2018. I'm gonna read the legal notice if that's okay. Okay. The select board of the town of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November 8th, 2017 at six o'clock p.m. at the Waitley town offices for Sandy Lane. 
for the purposes of determining the current year's tax allocation between the five classes of taxable property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. For more information, contact the Board of Assessors, Frederick Orlowski Chair, Select Board. This was in the Greenfield Recorder on Saturday, November 4th, 2017, and posted in the town offices. Okay. So all we're deciding is the whether all the classes should have the same tax rate. Uh, yep, and, and the purpose of the public hearing would be to gather any input from those in attendance who would offer suggestions as to what the board might decide. Right. Okay. I, I guess I, I don't see a, a problem with this. We've been doing this for years. And I don't know if we ever had a, a different tax rate, right? For, mm -hmm. for the commercial especially, I guess, is the next yeah, I, biggest I, item. But I personally don't see any reason to change it. I, I, yeah. Maybe I'm going to be ostracized from town, but I think we should be encouraging commercial development as opposed to um, creating deterrence to commercial development. Mm -hmm. And and if we change the the one to one ratio, that's a deterrent. Right. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we do want businesses to pay their fair share, so it doesn't make sense to go the other way and oh, of course, business right. rate lower. So I'm um, I'm happy with it as is. Is there anybody in the public who has an opinion they want to air? Okay, I have a motion to accept this classification. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Yeah. We have to sign something. This would require your signatures. Okay. Just spread, right? Well, There's only one space for one, so yeah. Just spread. Last year it was just, I don't think it, why don't we have everybody sign that? I think they could. Mm, okay. I All think right. it would be easier if squeeze it in the box. Here. I think you can go below the box. That's okay. Below the box. Well, we'll let Fred go in the box since he's because those chair. are electronically signed, but we scan in the copy that you sign. It's okay. Moving on. Make a lot of sense. On the agenda, a little early, but uh, six fifteen appointment. Joe Shea. That's who makes you uh, talk about the Hampshire from the Hampshire County Insurance Trust. Talk about health insurance. Um, do you think there might be people who want to be here who are not here yet? Possibly. Well, okay, so. Just pop through the business, right? So I think it's an important through. enough issue that, that it might be that people are. I agree. Are, are not going to get until 7.15. Maybe we could take a couple of small things up. Okay. Uh, 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 steering committee is easy. It should be easy. Uh, so you want to go to old business? Yeah. Old business? Okay. Uh, 250th anniversary steering committee. Sue Barron was going to try to attend for this. And she's obviously not here, so I we should do that. I, I can, um, since I'm on the, on the ad hoc committee, one of the things that I can just let you know, I don't obviously know it hasn't been made as a, as a formal request, um, but that is we are seeking to have a secretary represent this ad hoc committee and have it be a paid position. Um, <clears throat> those that are on the committee don't feel that it, it's fair for someone who wants to participate to try to be the secretary because it makes it very difficult to participate in the conversation. So if being on the committee as a committee, committee member um, we, that's why we just feel that we need to have somebody taking minutes. We look back, we have the records from 1971, and the, it was, it, the secretary was a paid position at that point in time also. Um, I, I, we all feel on the committee that it's very important to have um, good records so that the, these records will be made available in another 50 years down the road, so for our 300. So, that's primarily, I believe, what Sue would wanted, wanted to probably bring forth and discuss. I don't know whether we need to, what step we need to do to, to actually make a formal request. Um, we certainly know that come annual town meeting, it could be maybe budgeted at that point in time, but 
in the mid in the mid term of the year um, we're meeting once a month and so it might take a couple you know we may be talking four or five meetings before a town meeting which would have maybe talking a couple hours per month at the most so Chief, my concern with this is that there are a number of committees and commissions in town all volunteer like the 250th and none of them have a, a, a secretary that, that that's getting paid and it runs the risk of creating a huge precedent for all of a sudden every committee and commission and you know we're small so we're we're at the mercy of volunteerism well there was a time though when all these committees had paid secretaries right when i first started going to school committee meetings there was someone there paid to uh excuse me take the minutes uh all, all the committees had those right and, I, and they've, they've kind of fallen by the wayside so it might be something we should be thinking about for committees that we really want to be functional and really really want to have the records kept well well i would argue that if we have a committee we want it to be functional have good record keeping if if we don't think that it's important enough to have mm -hmm. be functional and good record keeping then perhaps we shouldn't have that committee that, that you know, then then you're making the argument for me that uh, it might be something to consider going back to it was the, one of the reasons that for the school committee that fell by the wayside was it was really hard to get anyone to do it for the amount of money that was offered um, and it tended to be you know a parent whose kid had basketball the same night as a school committee meeting not worked through the basketball season <laughs> or or things like that it, it wasn't it, it was really hard to find someone who was willing to do it I guess was the other thing but there's there's still like Johnson saying a lot of committees that, that have their own secretary I guess I'm on some that yeah somebody has volunteered to do the minutes uh, it's going to be an added expense to our operating budget, I guess, to do that. I, maybe that's something we could, or Brian could figure, try to figure out if we wanted to go that way, what's the cost going to be to our budget. How many committees and commissions are there in town? <coughs> uh, what do you got, 12, 15, something like that? Uh, more, at least. At least, yeah. And, and they all meet monthly at the, at the very least. Right. No, see, we have someone paid to take the minutes here yeah. for us. So it's and it seems that maybe I don't know, maybe the more important or more critical ones have paid minutes, paid mm -hmm. people doing the minutes. But mm -hmm. you know, planning does. Uh, Could we CBA. find out how many committees do have someone um, who gets paid to take the minutes, so we could maybe bring this up again next time and see if it. You know, if it's something that we can afford for a, a committee that's not going to be around all that long, won't be a long-term expense. Okay. Jim, do you have? Yeah, uh, the library trustees, we, we record all of our meetings. We have a tape recorder. Yeah. So the individual who is a trustee can fully participate in the meeting and then transcribe the notes at a later time. And that's worked well for us for years. Oh, okay. But, so who transcribes in the part of the committee or is the library staff? or? No, one of our one of our trustees well, just trustee, brings a uh, okay. a little tape recorder in and we record the whole meeting. Yeah. You realize that you probably should be saving those tape recorders. I'm just saying, yeah. if, you, if they're made, they're public record. And you, you know. Yeah, maybe they are. I don't know. I've never been in that position where I had to. I, 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 I'm 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 just saying that when then people are going to say, well, I want to make sure these minutes yeah. are reflective of what actually happened. And kind of related is the other concern I have is is not all the committee minutes get on our website, and either they're not submitted to be on, or staff here doesn't have time, I guess, to put them on. I, I don't know. It's a work in progress. I think it's the former. Not the, I think it's the former. Former. Okay. Uh, if we could, if we could just step back from from the issue of a, of a paid recorder secretary, but in terms of the nature of the committee as a whole and whether it has, as we get closer to the 250th, if there's gonna be a desire for that committee to be able to spend town funds. If that's true, we should look at, at, at formalizing the committee. Um, Isn't formal now? No, it's, a, it's an ad hoc committee. The board hasn't appointed anybody to any committee. Oh, I agree with that. 
um, at this point. We, we asked for volunteers, and then the volunteers got together and right. But it, oh, and so that's not official enough to to say, hey, we have a committee we need volunteers for, and people step up. Or um, I don't think it's formal enough for that committee to, for instance, have a annual uh, line item in the annual budget. Oh. Mm. We should at least vote on the membership. And so that usually happens in January. No, it can happen any time. I mean, no, but there's, there is a, a meeting, though, where we go through and we, we go through all the appointments that we have. Right, that typically happens um, sometime in June because we're June, right. okay. for that. But we can fill <laughs> spots. We can, we can do anything in between. Right, right, right. Right. I was going to say, um, if it's coming up in January anyway, that'd be. So, whatever that process is, you're interested in forming yeah. this making this committee more formal, appointing members to. I would think so. So, so one of the issues is that there, there's, do we do we just want to appoint a, a steering committee? I think they that you guys have talked about sort of a five, I don't know, five to seven yeah, member sure. steering right. committee who are mm -hmm. uh, the, the people who are providing direction to the, I don't know, it's 20 mm -hmm. to 30 the other people members. who might be on smaller committees under the steering committee. Yeah, I think that's what, that was kind of what came up at the last. Okay. You know, and, and, and getting to Keith's question, once you formalize it and once you give any committee a budget, I guess in theory, as much as I'm not sure I'm, a, I'm in agreement of paying a secretary, in theory, a committee or commission has discretion over their budget. Right, because every committee is shown in... Uh, in a, in a budget they, sheets with, with they can do with that money a token amount for yes I the select board signs the, the warrants but I don't think you're gonna right go and then they just have to answer to town meeting if people at town meeting say wait a second what are you doing yeah. because yeah. town meeting is right. the yeah. controlling History. authority of they're the legislative body, we're just the executive body. I mean, I see it similar to, for instance, the housing committee. Yeah, but there's different strings on that money that they get, right? Well, they, they have an annual line of appropriation of $800 oh, or $500 or something yeah. like that. I mean, I, 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 I'll personalize it, the, the, rec, the rec committee. A, 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 a good budget and a revolving account. And you can hire your own secretary. We could. I for that, wouldn't, right? wouldn't suggest that we do that because I just sit there with my laptop and I type in the stuff that I want to type in. And, but yeah. we could. In, in theory, we yeah. could. Right. All right. Well, it sounds like we're not going to come to a, an agreement here. Okay. But it sounds like we could get uh, some more information, though, and, and, start and find the, the way to the formalize process, the committee. The process. So you'd be interested in starting the process to formalize the committee, and that would that would be a way to get them some budget anyway, whether it's <coughs> whether it's for they, whether they use any money for reporting secretary or not, that has to happen anyway, right? Right, and we'd be looking to the, the ad hoc committee to nominate persons to the steering that the select board mm -hmm. could appoint to the steering committee. Yeah. Okay. So you were you were looking into whether they had to come to the town meeting. I, I still oh, need to talk to Lynn about that. And is is that does that happen with other committees, or is this because this is a I don't know a special committee or something? Well, why why this? Um, I still need to research. I couldn't find anything in the recent town meeting minutes that that required vote of, of town meeting. But I, I want to as part of as part of the next steps. I want to just make sure. So that could be required for case. any 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 town meeting that. Or any, when I say special, any, any committee, committee, any committee that it's organized may have to be approved at town meeting. Is what you're saying? I, I, I'm saying I don't know the answer. You don't to that know, question. but okay. Yeah. yeah. But I will find out. Let's get some more information and okay. take it up to the next meeting. Okay. You guys are going to meet once a month. Yes. Yeah. Meet them next week. Next week. Next yeah, Monday. Yeah. Next week, right? okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of money, clearly, but. Right for that one committee. <clears throat> but in the future, as we get closer, and there's consideration of town funds being spent on the celebration itself, it might be useful. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. But that's, 
I mean, most committee most committees do spend town money. Yes. See, so it's that's what I. Okay. Okay. Uh, before we get into town hall, let's go back to the six fifteen because we've got people here waiting. Uh, okay, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Give you the floor. Okay. Um, I'm Joe Shea from the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust, which is your insurance company uh, for your employees of the town. And I handed out just um, a few pages just to walk through the financials of the trust. And um, uh, page one, if you look at the statement of net assets, if you just go to the far right hand column, uh, the unaudited financials as of June 30th. Uh, the assets of the trust are cash and short-term investments, uh, accounts receivable, and other investments uh, that total a little over $27 million. Uh, the liabilities of the trust are uh, Medicare Part D, that's the uh, premium that we pay for the, medic, uh, the MedEx um, retired employees, um, which is the prescription drug plan. Uh, we pay the federal government uh, premium and they basically uh, cover the, the cost of the pharmaceuticals. Uh, ACA transitional reinsurance, um, part of the Affordable Care Act, uh, there was a number of fees that were rolled out uh, that we pay on the behalf of all of the, the units and subscribers um, of the trust. Uh, the claim settlement payable receivable, um, we hire Blue Cross Blue Shield to adjudicate our claims and we have a payable receivable between ourselves and them. Uh, we, we pay them uh, approximately $4.6 million every month and then we do a settling up on a quarterly basis. Um, sometimes they owe us, sometimes we owe them. And then member deposits of $3.7 million, that represents all of the 70 units, there's 70 units that make up the trust. Uh, when you enter into the trust, we do ask for a premium deposit on hand, um, and that basically is listed as a liability, um, you know, because that, those funds still belong to the, to the member unit. And the last item for liabilities is uh, the IBNR, uh, just an insurance, um, term uh, incurred but not reported. Basically just an estimate of claims that are out there that have been incurred but have not been reported back to the trust yet and have not been paid. So again, uh, we, we book a conservative estimate of, of what those claims are. So a grand total of uh, the current liabilities was $8.4 million. And then nine current liabilities are just um, uh, vacation time and OPEB li liabilities of the four trust employees uh, that total a little over $100,000. So when you take the assets of $27 million less the liabilities of $8.5 million, uh, you end up with a net asset of $18.7 million. And that's really the biggest or most important number on this financial sheet. Uh, the unrestricted amount of $18.7 million is the excess cash that we have on reserve to help uh, basically uh, through any big uh, claim experiences that uh, we might have, uh, incur. Where I did include three other years um, on this page where if you looked at the very first year on the page, uh, insurance year 2014, at that point in time, we had $27 million worth of unrestricted cash. So in a four-year time period, we've dropped from $27 million down to the $18.7 million. So we've lost eight or $9 million in four years. And again, that's four, eight or $9 million of a loss that the trust has incurred, not Blue Cross Blue Shield, where again, the 70 units basically own the trust. It's not a Blue Cross Blue Shield loss, it's a trust loss, so as, as a member of the trust, uh, Waitley participated in that loss over, the, over that four-year time period. And what's happened over that four-year time period, uh, probably the biggest factor um, that, that's driven this loss is pharmaceuticals. Uh, we've seen our pharmaceutical expenses uh, double in that four-year time period. They were approximately uh, $5.9 million a year four years ago, and now they're uh, approaching $12 million a year right now. Where does so, that show up on this chart? Uh, again, it's um, it's part of the whole claim process. So again, when so it's this line. So so when you see twenty seven million dropping to eighteen point seven, part part of the no. expense. Okay, I understand that, but uh, this number came from the ones above it. So you, when you say the pharmaceutical price increases, which line is that affecting here? Assets, liabilities. Well, it, it ends up uh, impacting the very bottom line, which is well, no, okay. where the expenses. But, but where are those expenses about um, far, about pharmaceuticals and drugs that you might be paying? 
which of these other lines under assets? Probably not. Under liabilities, which of these liabilities is the one that's going up? Again, that's causing the problem. Uh, again, what you're not seeing, th this is just net assets and liabilities. What, what you don't see on this financial snapshot are complete premiums coming in the door, less all the claims going out the door leads you either a positive or a negative number. And over the and last that positive quarter, or negative number, does that show up on here? Well, yes, I mean, you, you, you Where? well, you see from- I'm just asking general. a question. I'm actually pretty good with numbers. No, I, I know that. So um, I don't understand why, uh, if, if it's an increase in cost that's causing 27 million and down to 18 million, mm -hmm. why isn't that number that's causing it on here somewhere? Or Again, this is just is a snapshot of assets and liabilities, not the operating right. expenses. Do you have a do you, do you have a pay now? Um, I'm sure you have a pay now. Yes, we do, but, but did I did not bring one. Because no. that, yeah. what Joyce is looking for, we would be seeing the pay now. Okay. But it should, it should also imagine. be here. If, yes. if, this, if, the, if you've got a reason for this number going down each year, yep. then it should be buried maybe, but it's in one of these other numbers above it. Right. And, it's, it's, and you're not able to tell me or not willing to tell. No, George, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to break in because I, yeah, I, 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 I don't it, understand. That number would not be seen in this That's type right. of a chart. The number Correct. would be seen in a P&L. And so what's a and uh, profit, profit and loss. And, loss. Okay. and, so and why the profit and loss is, is the state. Because, 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 you know, you, going to your point, what, you're not, what you don't see in here at all is the premiums coming in the door on a monthly basis either. You have premiums that come in the door to the uh -huh. tune of, uh, uh -huh. of uh, five and a half to $5.7 million a month, less the claims. So the claims being actual medical claims and pharmaceutical claims, administrative fee claims, reinsurance fee claims, reinsurance fees, and so the that net of all those. So that doesn't come under um, like claims payable or? The claims. All these, all these they, I, do you understand? Yeah. No, 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 no. And then, because and you're, you're, you're claiming that Medicare or the, the, sorry, the, the pharmaceuticals are causing this, you know, um, roughly $9 million mm -hmm. decrease. And you got these numbers from here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking. Right. But I'm not also, again, and, and my point is, I'm not showing you the income side nor the expense side. I'm showing what the asset change is. Can you show those to me? Yes, I mean, I can show you. Uh, okay. I mean, we do maintain yeah, monthly sort of accounting of records that are right. yeah, on a monthly basis. That I was making, that yes. right. That's a very helpful because, again, when I sit on boards and we have our financial statements on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, depending upon, or the boards, when I have to provide present mm -hmm. these to, to different clients, they want to see cash flow, they want right. to see PL, they want to see, and, you know, any number of different sure. statement of accounts. Sure. Um, so that, for me, would be very helpful okay. to see that p because that would answer what your monthly revenues are, what your net monthly expenses are, and what those expenses actually are, and what where, where the revenues come from. What's your diversification of revenue? No, no, that and, and that's all accurate, and and that is provided on a on a monthly basis to my executive committee. Um, when I come out to select boards, I usually bring this financial snapshot just to uh, show where we were four years ago from the unrestricted cash balance to where we are today and what the, the uh, driving factors were. But, but what you're asking for, Jonathan, wouldn't the, the bottom line from the, that information be shown here in the annual? Like for example, yeah. 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 how you got there them. would not. It's just the, it's just no, assets and liability. Okay. What, what, what the P&L will show is how you got to this bottom line. Yeah, but the bottom line on, say, the PL sheet, isn't that going to be one of these numbers on here? No. Yeah, uh, that's my mm, point. No, Should, no. Because, for example, member accounts receivable is on there. It keeps going up. It's up to like 3.6 million here, starting from less than a million there. So that's going up. And again, member account receivables. Right. That's um, not the payments that people are making yet? Well, that, that, that is the amount that's still owed from all of the units as of June 30th. So on June 30th of uh, 2017, all the member units owed the trust $3.6 million. And the reason it's so high is that uh, we have a grace period that's extended um, at the beginning of the fiscal year that a number of the units take advantage of. They're so, two very different forms. But, but I... I, I will I will say that 
because of the conversation that we're having and the discussion about where do the um, where do we go in terms of our employees and what they're paying? Um, the P&L is a really big part of whether we say this is a good direction or it's not a good direction. Okay. Just the assets. It, it's an incomplete story in, in, in my book. Okay. Okay, can I ask? Uh, on your investments here under assets, uh, what are your investments in? If you could say, and how secure are these investments? Uh, the the investments are um, approximately nine million dollars. Are within a variety of uh, bank CDs, local banks. Uh, the other about nine and a half million dollars is invested um, in um, bonds and stocks. And uh, the 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 trust does have an investment policy um, that that we follow. And um, the investments, uh, especially in the, the the current nine and a half that's invested in both stocks and bonds. Uh, the bonds are primarily U.S. government to high-grade um, corporate bonds. Uh, the the nine and a half million, about a million and a half, is in the stock market, uh, and usually it's it's uh, AAA rated kind of stocks. Uh, but those investments themselves, this calendar year, have done uh, very well, just because again the stock market itself has done very well. Right. Who is your money manager? Uh, Mike Zerzinski with Wells Fargo, in Northampton. Okay. You have more here. To okay. Um, no, just if I could, just going back to again the, the couple driving points uh, being again the pharmaceuticals have, have increased significantly over the four-year time period, and then just the Affordable Care Act in the last three years um, since the Affordable Care. Um, was rolled out uh, that the trust has paid on behalf of all of the units $1.2 million worth of uh, taxes and fees. Where again, it's taxes and fees that you don't see, you don't really hear about, and but again, the federal government has, has levied them on, the, on uh, basically anybody that has insurance. And again, that's uh, again more cash that basically was uh, taken out of the trust uh, over the last three to four years. Uh, page two is just a snapshot going back to, uh, to bless you, uh, 2000 of uh, just the rate increases that the uh, trust has, has seen. Again, going back to 2000, um, I would point out during uh, the, the, there was a time period from 2011 to 2014 that the trust didn't uh, see any premium increases at all for a four year time period. Um, and then they did start accelerating um, over the last couple of years uh, to this past year where, again, the HMO went up 9.4% and the PPO went up 10.8% during that, during that time period. And as of 2018, the MedEx plan, the retirees uh, that participated in the MedEx plan, um, we, we saw the uh, very small increase that will take a place on January 1st, 2018. It was only a 1.7% increase. In page three is just a report that we used to do for the state of Massachusetts where uh, the state ended up getting rid of this form. What they would like me in this palette is that did not participate in the state GIC plan, which is their group insurance commission, which all state employees belong to and a number of municipalities also participate in. They wanted a municip municipal group to compare your plan to the state plan. and. Um, it's not a very good apples to apples comparison just because the state plan has seven different insurers in there. There's a lot of different co-pays and deductibles that also a subscriber would have to pay. And so basically we would compare our premium rates against the most uh, actively used plan within the state GIC plan. So for the town of Waitley, and this is through June 30th, 2016, if you go to the uh, close to the bottom, the annual savings, by just doing a pure premium comparison, uh, the town of Waitley saved approximately $61,000 by participating in the trust versus uh, using the most active plan of the state GIC. Now when you say the town of Waitley, is the corollary to that that our employees also saved? Correct. Yes, this is just pure premium and where the employees actually save even more are on the co-pays and deductibles because all of the plans within the state GIC has co-pays and deductibles. So again, 
if you were participating in the state GIZ play, plan, you would be not only paying your premium, but you would also be writing out checks for these co-pays and deductibles. And you're right now there are no co-pays and no deductibles. Right now the only co-pay is a 15 or $20 co-pay to a doctor's visit. Other than that, uh, emergency room, but there are no co-pays um, or deductibles if, there were, if you were hospitalized, if you had outpatient surgery, if you had um, MRIs or anything like that. There right now, no co-pays for that at all? None. What about physical therapy? Uh, that would just be considered an office visit. That would be the 15 or 20 dollars, correct. So over the last two years, um, basically landed us on page four. And um, two years ago, the executive committee, I report into an executive committee of nine members uh, that, that, are, that are part of the 70. And then there's an insurance advisory committee that um, all units uh, have a membership in, so, so Waitley as a membership at the IAC. So approximately two years ago, we started the discussion of, should we start looking at or having a discussion, discussion around making some kind of changes to our benefits? Um, we knew that we were in a time period where rates were starting to accelerate. Um, there was no rhyme or reason why the pharmaceutical expenses literally exploded. Um, and that was happening to all of the groups or units um, uh, within the state of Massachusetts and really within the country. So when we started those discussions, we asked what did the uh, 70 units want in regards to potential changes? And it was loud and clear back that they did not want a GIC-like plan where you would have both deductibles and co-pays across the board on everything. And uh, over that two-year period, we kept talking and ultimately landed on the column that you see with the arrow, um, which was voted on in both July and October. Um, and would go into effect on July 1st, 2018, where we would be rolling out uh, co-pays um, on a number of services, um, primarily being the inpatient admissions, uh, surgical, outpatient <coughs> surgeries, MRIs, and then also a, um, a deductible just on prescription drugs. These changes would save uh, the uh, premium increase to the tune of about 5.45%. If by implementing these, we'll be able to save five and a half percent effectively, which means we'd be able to keep our, any premium increase for this upcoming year um, at, a, at a much lower level. When you say save, you're not reducing, you are just minimizing the Correct. increase. Correct. Right. Um, what and, and that premium obviously changes depending upon your family situation. Right, well, we, on, on, on the HMO plan, we do offer a, a single plan, a plus one, which most um, people don't offer at all in the marketplace, and then a family plan. And then on the PPO side, uh, it's just an individual and a family plan. There's not a plus one. And then in Waitley, what's that breakdown ballpark in terms of what plans employees are um, right now you only have two folks on the PPO and approximately 27 28 folks on the in the HMO so uh, you have seven single plans seven or eight employee plus one and 13 to 14 uh, family plans and then again on the PPO side it's uh, two in the PPO and they're both individual plans. And you have uh, eight uh, within our MedEx retiree plan. So again, we had the discussion, we had the vote, and uh, the changes that you see here on page four um, would be the changes that would go into effect on July 1st, uh, 2018. So if you want to take your hat off for a second and be a third party arbiter and throw a dart, who's going to be most happy with these changes and who's going to be most disappointed with these changes? <laughs> I mean, in b bottom line, nobody's happy with I get um, that, but, um, you know, it, uh, who, who's, <clears throat> going to, who's going to come out further ahead, the person who Stomachs the increase, and but but never never has no need to go to the the, the doctor very often, or the person who's going to the doctor more often. The, who's making out better? Well, the 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 person basically 
from an insurance side, they, they say 80% of the claims is generated by 20% of the population. Right. So again, the 20% of the population will be paying more via co-pays. But, the, but the 80% of the population that do not go to the doctors much uh, will, 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 I would think, um, like this just because instead of, let's say, a 10% increase, they may be, may be only looking at a 4% increase. In premiums. In premiums, in correct. Premiums. Right. But somebody, let, let, let's say, is, is, is going to the doctor for a variety of things, their co-pays and deductibles um, will rise during, during the insurance year. So those are the, the again, the, the, the folks that do go to the doctors a lot um, will be impacted the most financially. Right, well that's true of any. But it, right. Yeah, but it's not the same 20% of the people every year. Right. It no. depends on what part right. of your life you're in. So it might be that somebody who doesn't go to the doctor that much, their kids are grown. Right. And so, you know, all the time while they had their kids, they had this great plan, and now it's like, well, this doesn't bother me. Right, and, 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 and I will say that these changes do not impact the retirees, the MedEx plan. The, these are for the active plan, so someone that's actively at work or um, that has retired but they're under 65 and are not moving into the, to yeah. the Or on the other hand, somebody who's like has not been in the, that 20%, that evil 20% who use their health insurance. Um, you know, somebody, then they start a family and all of a sudden then they're in this, right. this place where they need it. I mean, it's sort of against the idea of, of insurance in some ways to to increase co-pays and deductibles um, because you're supposed to insurance supposed to be there when you need it and if you pay for it and you don't end up using it you're supposed to go thank goodness I didn't need to so I, I guess I'm, I'm dismayed by that shift to placing more burden on the people who are probably least able to Take it on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Again, we in in the two years worth of discussions, that argument was brought up, and uh, you know, but then then on the flip side, the argument was brought up by a number of units. Just the tax burden um, that would be put onto a municipality if you saw a number of year uh, years of ten percent increases year after year after year. Where are those tax dollars going to come from? They have to come from somewhere, and um, school districts. Would, would be the ones, you know, or at least a couple of the groups would say that, again, that might involve headcount um, reductions if you have significant premium increases year after year after year because, again, the money has to come from somewhere. Okay. But the, the person that's sick a lot and needs, needs insurance uh, is probably going to reach the maximum out of pocket on these because it don't take much to reach that maximum these days. Again, so, so, so there's no, if you're reaching the maximum, there, there's no change really in, in your out of pocket. Right, yeah, if you reach the maximum, but... Um, your premiums are going to be less. Your premiums will be less, less yes. Right. And right. then you stop paying the deductibles and the copay. Right, yeah, once you hit the max, you, you, yeah. you, you stop paying any copay or deductible. I mean, that's in any, in any insurance plan. What percent usually reach the max is... Um, again, because we've had no copays or deductibles, Prior to this, um, I don't know of any. Yeah, but I would have not. Did you have an out-of-pocket maximum in the current system? Yes, we do. But but again, at fifteen dollars for an office visit. Yeah, but so you don't happen to know what percentage of people make it there? Is it zero? No, right. I, I, I don't have that answer just because we don't have anybody that would have reached it because the most they were paying okay. out-of-pocket was a fifteen. So it sounds like you're budget. saying that the, the answer is zero percent yes. under the current system yes. reached that maximum. Right. But you know how many people who, in Waitley, maybe not <coughs> to be your fingers, but you know the number of office visits that Waitley beneficiaries have made over the past year. No, we don't. We, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, because of HIPAA, will not give us that information. I have that information for the whole trust. I get an analysis on an annual basis for the whole trust. But not broken down. But not time. broken down because Blue Cross Blue Shield views the trust as one entity. Where the trust breaks it into the 70 pieces, we'll build Waitley individually, we'll build uh, Deerfield individually, but when we get our claim report back from Blue Cross Blue Shield, we just get a claim report for the whole... 200 visits could, could have come from one person. Correct. 
you know, a perfect example, of what, one of the things that the trust does to, to um, protect itself from large claims is, is we do um, purchase reinsurance. And reinsurance is insurance on top of insurance where uh, we have a reinsurance plan in place uh, with a stop loss amount of $275,000. And what that means is the first $275,000 of a claim the trust is responsible for. Anything over $275,000 the reinsurer pays. And uh, last year, uh, that stop loss amount was at $250,000. We had eight folks that went over that $250,000 mark. So eight times two hundred fifty, the trust was responsible for $2 million worth of claims just on eight people. One of those folks hit a million four. Two of them went over half a million dollars. So again, we protected ourselves by having this um, reinsurance plan in place. But I could tell you by looking at the detail, you know, whether it was a, a weightless person or not, but again, uh, because of HIPAA, um, any group under 100, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield will not give you that kind of claim data. What I wish that would have happened, and I appreciate this conversation a lot, sure. but as, you know, we all value the contribution that our employees make, whether they're teachers or they're highway guy, who cares what, it, what they do? They all provide critical pieces of service to the functioning of this town. And they've been in the dark. And I really wish that this explanation would have happened. We first started talking about this in June or July, I want to say. Yep. And the can got kicked down the road over and over and over again. And there's anxiety on the part of these people, understandably, because it is their health care. Mm -hmm. Whether it's their own health care or because they've got kids, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And it's not fair to them. It is absolutely not fair. Okay. And, and now we're forced to make a decision in a, I forget the time frame, Brian, but in a relatively close proximity as to whether we stick with the Hampshire Trust or we go to the state system. And, 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 and I don't believe that there's any lack of transparency, but I understand why somebody would. Okay. Again, um, yeah, I'm not sure who was showing up or if they did show up to the IAC. Um, because the, uh, the Insurance Advisory Committee meets on a quarterly basis. The Executive Committee meets on a monthly basis. We send out minutes um, to um, your representative. Uh, yeah, you're the expert. expert. I got to tell oh, you. Oh, no, 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 I realize that. But again, we, we announced back in April what these changes were going to be. And we asked all of the members to go out to, to communicate to their, gover to their governing board. And they did. Okay. But still, you're the expert. That's my frustration that that there was no. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm, I'm 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 putting myself in their position where they've been not sure of the whys and the hows and the where. Then it sort of goes to the I, I I would have thought that we would have had a P and L here because that avoids further questions because I can look at a P and L and say okay now I see why why the why the the um, why the the um, current assets are, are lower than they were mm -hmm. two years ago. But so that's my, I, I, I get it. And I get that it's probably inevitable. Um, but I'm not sure, and maybe, maybe you could talk, I'm not sure the, the dollar figure is their beef, although of course it is, it's the process. Yeah, they've that's... been totally in the dark, and it's not fair to them. Well, let me on that note. Let me ask Brian: Has as any of this information been sent to our employees? Are they aware of this? And I thought they were being invited to this meeting to hear mm -hmm. what yeah. what Joe yeah. had to say. Okay. Because I remember in July it was like, hurry up and hurry up and hurry up and accept this. July off. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, hurry uh, up, I'm... hurry up, get this, get it accepted, get it, pass this thing, and say that you'll in July, and then so sort of like. Okay, well, we, yeah, we want to be a part, at least potentially a part of this. Let's accept the part of the law that we needed to accept. And then it's like right. crickets. Okay, well, let me go back to the question of Brian. Have the yeah. employees been aware of what's going on? 
of changes in, in either any of this information? Have they seen of this? this? Of this sheet? Um, did I send you the sheet? Um, you've got a very little. I'll be honest yeah. with you. So, I mean, it's been asked many times. I mean, I've been here a couple of times, and I know a few others have been here. So, I mean, we we want to be actively involved in this discussion um, because it does affect uh, many people work just to make sure that they have health insurance for their families. Um, and it's, you know, it's, so this is a real critical um, issue with us. Yeah. This is where we saw the this is the first time we saw the details. Right. Was our last seen, meeting? We've been involved to the extent we have. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't involve in, in, in terms of in terms of actual financial impacts, when will we know that? Uh, so yes. Yeah, so, so so going forward, um, generally we will the executive committee of the trust will set the rate in December, um, and then look to the insurance advisory committee to adopt the rate in January for the next insurance year. So uh, again. Um, uh, a month, a month or so from now, what happens is Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, will ask uh, their underwriter or, or actuaries to give their uh, best guess of what they think uh, the rate increase should be. Um, I then look at my own financial records that we keep um, internally, just because they're looking at it more from a claim perspective because they know our claims better than we do. Because they may know that oh, there might be ten new cancer claims that might have come into the pipeline. So they're looking at looking at that and projecting out where I look at basically the cash coming in the door, you know the P and L, um, which I can share. Um, but uh, so I'll look at cash and then take their recommendation, look at my reports, and then try to, to land on a number of <coughs> recommendations. So again, that happens late in December, and the IAC is then presented that in January. So I and guess my question is, when would when would sort of a an employee know? What their five? What, what's been? What are the financial ramifications of this? Um, so I think that's really what the bottom line right, is. is. What is what's being asked? And to to some extent, they don't. They, I don't think the trust has the information yet. Correct. Because yeah. of some right. Of and then what what we'll end up doing is cross, actually right. giving you two numbers: what the rate would have been and what the rate is going to be. Um, and I'll tell you what the rate would have been is going to be five point four five percent higher. Um, but what the rate we're going to land on is going to be 5.45% 5, 5, 5 lower because of the change. Again, the, these changes based on the actuaries of Blue Cross Blue Shield are saying that this is going to save us 5.4%. Well, what, without those, what's the premium increase? Without, without these, so that's, and that's what we, we're going we to give you know, that in December. Okay. I don't know so that yet. But you don't the know. Premium increases correct. X for the new one. So X, X minus 5.4. Right. Right. For right. the. But we're not really going to have a choice. Is the well, we can go to the state. Well, well, the no, state. Uh, Maya, yeah. Maya is providing a quote as well. Yeah, so, so you, you're only giving us one option. If we want any other options, we have to go yeah. elsewhere. Right. right, right. And it's like if we wanted something that didn't have a lot of deductibles and co-pays, we're basically SOL, right? With the trust. With the trust. There's well, one option with the trust. Right. That the trust offers one option. And that right. is with all of this. And, and, but right. the state does, you see, he, I thought he well, said the state, the state doesn't offer anything that doesn't have deductibles. And right, the state, co -pays. All, all the state plans within the right. GIC have co pays and deductibles. Right. The, the right. deductibles right. are 500 and individual I thousand. If you wanted a plan that don't have yeah. deductibles yeah. and co pays or something comparable to what we have, we would find a different are. insurer, yeah. such as Maya. My, right. Yes. Okay. I'm going, feel like I'm going around in a circle here because he just said Maya doesn't have any that don't have copays and deductions. No, Maya. No, that's not the state plan. That's not the state plan. No, the state okay. GIC. So, but Maya does. So there's sort of Correct. three places that we're looking. Now, okay. right. So there are three, and we, and we will have that ability to compare. Now, I, there are very few plans that exist without deductibles and copays. It just, it just, I, that's I, what. I think we might, might we, the trust might that's be the, the last, reality. we right. might be the last one out there on the municipal side. That's right. Right. Okay. premiums. Although you just said that Maya. And then you even that, that it's it's Maya, Maya will quote you anything yeah. you want. I mean, you can go to Maya and say, I want the plan that we have today within the trust, which is zero, 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 zero. And they will give you the quote. Okay. But it'll be a pretty high premium problem. Well, we, I uh, think that's, well, a, that's a number we need to present to the people who are Pretty much say 100% that it's going to be high. Yeah. Just because you're, they're not going to look at your claim experience because you're too small. 
you're going to get put into a bucket of, of all these small municipalities and whatever their and, book, and, book and rate is is what you're going to get. Quoted. And this is why this is why I made the statement, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but they just want to know, and they've been asking the questions mm -hmm. for right. six months, and they haven't gotten the answers. And I really wish that we had done this six months ago because you guys are going to set whatever rate you feel is important to for your own fiscal sanity mm -hmm. and to keep the to keep the process going so you can continue to cover people that's true of any coverage right. but and they just no and, and and i've been literally coming out um many evenings since april because when we announced this in april um i did make the offer to all the units that i'll come out and talk to any group that you'd like me to talk to and and i have been um so unfortunately uh, this is the first time here so uh, when do we have to make a decision when's the opener right it's not open well, well i mean if we we'll, go backwards if contra well back. contractually you, you have to give if you're to leave the trust you have to give the trust 90 days notice so you'd have to give us notice by april 1st by april 1st correct and does that coincide with the periods for maya and the state gt well we would need to know which yes we would need to know which which path we're going down when we have to go through the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the process. Right. right. Um, so right. Right. And, and because it's bargaining with units, there's other time considerations too. Okay, so we'll hear more about this in future meetings, okay. Do, do we think that, that we'll know those, those premium increases before? We'll know those premium increases before the 90. We'll know yes, those yeah, yeah, sure. you, you'll know the premium increase. Um, uh, by second weekend or second Wednesday of um, January, I think is the ninth or tenth. Okay. Second Wednesday. Second Wednesday of January is when the insurance advisory committee will be meeting and we'd be presenting the rates. It's a meeting then. Okay. Yeah. Before we finish the topic, you had something you. Yeah, to I guess today. my concern is that you know this has been tabled a number of times, you know, right. uh, because of lack of information, and here we are down to the crunch time. And without the information other than what you're presenting here, um, are there any other options out there? I well, guess. that's what we're saying. We, we, there's a state option, and there's a, an option from the insurance equivalent of the Mass Municipal okay. Association. So you'll have three options that will, and I, I was going to suggest that, that Brian, because you don't have any time, you have plenty of time on your hands, Maybe I can um, get does a side-by-side -side of the, the whatever, Final numbers, Hampshire, uh, the Hampshire Trust comes up with, and we do a side by side similar to the one that we've right. seen here tonight of the three options, and and then I, we should probably have a discussion with. <coughs> I would open up to all town employees as crazy I know that right. as that is. They were because yeah. it'll be. <laughs> it'll be crazy. <laughs> okay. Is that possible, Brian? Do side by sides? Yeah. Yeah, it would be similar to but, right, to but it's like you know. I mean, you can get as many quotes as you like. I'm just going to say that that you're not going to be able to at least the state GIC to get a comparable side by side, just because again they have copays and deductibles that are much more than even what we're moving toward in um, Jan July first. You mean because they have different plan options, right? Well, they have seven seven different carriers and. Just as an example, they, their deductibles, there's a $500 individual and a $1,000 family plan on, on every single one of those seven plans, where ours is still going to be zero. Zero today, it's going to be zero on July 1st, 2018. So you're not going to be able to do a true side-by-side -side comparison because the state GIC does not offer what we offer. Well, but it's still a side-by-side. -side. You, you can see what is offered and what's right. not, and you can do a ballpark. Well, ballpark then, ballpark. then just make sure it's clear to, to the employees that there's, you know, a deductible. Absolutely. And, and I, it, what, what you won't have um, by, unfortunately, January is the state GIC um, is actively looking at their plans as well, just because the, basically the governor writes a blank check or it gives, has to give them a blank check every year. And, He's, doesn't want to do that anymore and so they are looking at making some drastic changes to the state GIC plan but nobody knows what that's going to ultimately be probably till February or March okay, but we have I, I guess my question is so this, this plan if it were to be implemented would go in what in October um, no, July 1st 2018 July 1st 2018 so we're looking at 
that this decision or a is going to happen pretty quickly. This this discussion of the plans, and then it's also going to be pre presented to the <coughs> employees. Yeah. Um, I, we, our insurance went up on what, almost 10%. Yes. I mean, people weren't really complaining about it, to be honest, because they were happy with the, um, the coverage that yep. we have. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. you know, I think people are willing to pay for the insurance. <laughs> And, 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 and we've heard that from a number of our units where there's, there's, a, there's a group of, of the 70 units that said, we don't care you know, what the percentage increase is going to be year after year. And then well, they'll eventually care. Well, yeah, and, yeah, but, then, but, then, but the, the, the majority of them did care and said, okay, what are the options? You, you either keep going with the rate increase um, or make radical changes to the, benefit, to the benefits or you do something in between and we landed on something in between where um, you know, these benefit changes we thought were, were modest compared to what, the, let's say, the state GIC offers. But you're also saying that it's going to increase by 5.4%, right? No, no, no. no. This, this, the, these changes are going, to, are going to save on the premium by at least 5.4%. Okay. So you don't know, so they don't know, you don't we know, don't know, know what the increase is going to be. I don't know, I guess I'm just trying to process right. this. This has been a long game. Oh. Yeah, so for example, if the premium increase we're going to be 10 percent right i'm keeping everything the same they're saying the changes would make it be only a five percent increase. increase right but it would still be the increase but then it would be right. additional high right. yeah yes so yeah, and i just pulled 10 percent out of the yes. air no no and i yeah. understand yeah. that yeah. Right. You, you were and really that's going to be a, a no no no, I, no we just I, want to be clear yes, yeah, yeah i do and like One, i said this has been going on for months my concern and, and joe has no control of it but joe opened up this the calendar <laughs> is that the state, it doesn't sound, in his opinion, doesn't sound like the state's going to have their numbers before March, right. maybe April. Uh, no, it's, it's before that. It's um, the way their calendar falls. They have um, open sessions, basically, to the public starting sometime in February, and they usually have them closed by the end of February maybe the first week of March. So everything numbers? isn't finalized with the state. This is the state GIC plan sometime mm -hmm. until I'd say the first week of March. Maya is completely different. Right. Maya, you can go to <coughs> and get so I guess So I guess my point is you said that we need to go thumbs up or thumbs down with the Hampshire Trust by April. By April 1st, correct. That gives less than a month mm -hmm. for this <laughs> town to decide what's in the best interest of our employees and it would be wonderful if we could have, actually have a conversation with our employees rather than just saying, this is how we feel mm -hmm. it's going to go. And, and that is, that's just not user friendly. Yeah. Well, and, and I will say, you know, the state GIC plan is, is going to offer something a lot worse than what we're proposing here. And um, okay. it's, it's my, my, Maya is your really other option unless you go with a standalone insurance company which is would be highly recommended against okay, okay now you represent the teachers is yeah that, okay or way of the elementary school yeah okay I just think. you emily pardon no i'm not emily no no i'm lois <laughs> okay any last okay. name just for the minutes lively okay so a fourth option here for those of us who are self-insured is 700 a month for a mediocre plan or 1400 a month for a family plan, both quite mediocre. Just just to put things in perspective here. None of us cheat. Yeah. No. And how, how big is your deductible? 10,000. Yeah. Right. How, what, what's your copay? Yeah. That well, it's, it's 10,000. It, it really doesn't matter because he has a $10,000. 10, oh, so so, so right. he keeps so writing I'll checks until he gets the $10,000. <laughs> It's been that way for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, okay, let's move, let's Thank move you. on. You're welcome. Thank and you. I, I'd be more than happy to come back. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> we'll let you know. Okay, uh, okay. Back to our No, I don't, I, 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 I think it's through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim has a, 
You have a, yeah. a, a library trustees meeting. Yeah, I, I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe we should ask. Yeah. yeah to our schedule appointments, Judy, do you mind if Jim goes first? No, not at all. He's got another commitment. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Okay, Jim. You're up, you're on your, you're up here for uh, yeah. talking a preservation grant for the Town Center Veterans Memorial. Right. Brian had contacted me a, a week ago, making me aware of this <coughs> matching fifteen thousand dollar grant from the um, That's incredible. State Historical Records Advisory Board, and we talked about the condition of the current Veterans Memorial, which I think we could all agree in this room needs a lot of help. Um, and this is going to take some time. This is not going to work. Uh, anything uh, close to, for example, Memorial Day of 18. We know that there's work going on with the Conway landscape design with the community center. Um, and we would like to put together four veterans on a memorial committee to be involved in what this is going to look like. And I might add, the the design is pretty generic, it's pretty simple. The hard work is the research on what names go on those memorials. That's, that's the real, real labor here. And we've got four guys who are willing to step up and do that and work with any landscape design that happens to um, be approved by the town. And perhaps offer our, our suggestions on what it should look like, that's all. We just want to have four vets in the game, and that's why I'm here tonight. Along with myself, there's Raymond Belial, Larry Ashman, and Alan Thackeray. And it's a plus having Larry on board because he's the library representative on this, with, with the Conway uh, landscape design, and he was also uh, participated in the original creation of that memorial back in 1970. So he's, a, he's going to be a real asset. So these four guys, three guys including myself, would like to uh, offer our volunteer services to head up a committee. And, that, and that's why I'm here. Okay, so your committee is seeking funds from this uh, uh, historic advisory board. So we're, we're going to apply for it, Fred. For Whether it. we get it or not, who knows? It's a matching grant. Um, and we'll work out with Brian what number we're going to put on that. Um, so where would the matching funds come from? Or your funds that you're going to match? Well, we are looking at CPA funds. Okay. That's it's what we're looking at. It's a cash match, it's not an in-kind match. I'm s Sorry, it's a cash match, not an in-kind match. Right, it's a cash match, right. right. Yep. Okay, so you depending, <coughs> depending on, so the process for this, there's a letter of intent that's due November 15th. Pretty simple. Um, and if the town were chosen, then it would be asked to submit a full application, which would be due January 15th. Full application is due January 15th. Um, so that's kind of what the timing would be. I guess what we would need tonight from the board is if, I guess, a discussion about whether, whether this would be something that the town would want to apply for. Course. What's the award date? What's the award date? Um, I don't know. So if it's getting to your question about CPA funds, I don't know if that's where you're going with this, but I'm not certain that 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 we would be able to use CPA funds. Um, at least we couldn't say in our application that CPA funds were our source of match because CPA funds wouldn't be appropriated prior to the submission of the grant application. We may have to, we may have to search other sources or, or, or think about other sources there. Well, but anything's going to have to, any, any cash is going to have to be right. approved by some entity. Right. You need to approve that. Account. So you're saying you might have to apply with an in-kind match? We could apply with in-kind or we could... But I thought you said the in-kind wasn't an option. It has no, to be cash. It, it, could be, it could be Oh, it can be in-kind? Oh, okay. Direct, uh, direct Sorry. funding kind donations of volunteer labor. Okay, so you need a decision on the board whether to proceed with this, and this would be the only 
letter of intent that we're submitting? Well, there's also, you know, this year. Yep. There's done. also, um, I had had a conversation with Darcy, one of the okay. secretary commissioners. Okay. In, the, in the past, they have submitted um, a letter of intent as well for um, restoration of gravestones, right? Of gravestones. Um, right. well, 12 are no markers for Civil War soldiers. So we have to decide on which one of these. Um, I mean, I could find out if we can submit a letter of intent for both. I'm happy to make that phone call to the to the board, but if we can't, I guess I, I need some direction as to um, I, what to submit. I guess my, my preference would be the, the uh, Veterans Memorial. Uh, the, not only the fact that it hasn't been updated in, in, in years, it needs to be, but I think this could be part of our, our 250th celebration. By the time they get through deciding what to do and getting the names on, there could be an event during our 250th year to dedicate this new memorial and all. So I, th I think that's an important part of, of the submittal and, and maybe somewhere say that, that that's our goal. Because it could take that long. I don't know if, you, I suspect if you've been reading in a paper, Heath just went through it. Jim remembers being, being there to help them or, or observe the, their dedication, but they said it took three or four years to get everything finalized which would fall in place for our, our celebration in 2021. I'm curious about Is it possible to think about moving the memorial to the cemetery and create, and I'm, again, I'm just thinking, I'm blue sky in this. I, I may be crazy on about five million levels. But if you created a new memorial somewhere in the footprint or just outside the footprint of the cemetery, could you then have a co-application where it's not, you're not submitting twice, you're submitting one application for a broader vision? Uh, uh, Jonathan, that, that was discussed by that ad hoc committee because that was one of the recommendations from Conway School of Design is to move the memorial somewhere else. I don't know if they said where, and I, that did not receive favorable response from the ad hoc committee. And, and there's also, I've seen, I, I don't know if it came to Brian or not, Several of the veterans in town have strongly said, we don't want to move the memorial. We want to leave it where it is. But how it's come? Fine. I'm curious. Well, no. There's how many cemeteries in town? Five? Three, 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 three. four. Three, There's three, veterans three in all town, of them. Three towns. Yeah. You, you can't just sub take one cemetery. I was thinking the center of town. I admit it. Yeah. 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 I, we, it's not going to work because you're going to have no idea. Okay, I just, I, again. Yeah. If you don't ask the question, you're crazy not to ask the question. Yeah, that's, that's why. They've come up already. So. The, the Waitley Center study, the, one of the options was moving it to the lawn of the library because there was space there and it seemed park-like, I think. And, and one of the issues was expansion. Yeah. And a lot of people felt that it was important, especially with the renovation of Town Hall, to keep the Memorial Day ceremonies there yeah. in, in conjunction with the Historical Society. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, that, not that there might not be another site, but of those two, the town hall was strongly preferred. But it even came up in some of our discussions on the town hall project, whether to encroach on that memorial or move it, and it was decided we weren't gonna do that. And some people spoke out at our meeting about that as well, so so it has come up before. Ryan, one of your early right. emails indicated something about a, a landscape design. Is that part of the application? Um, when Jim and I were talking, so the question is, do we apply for the actual funds to implement it, or do we apply for planning funds? I see. Um, 
So the idea was if, if between whenever we find out after November and between the middle of January, if we could get if we could have some funds available to do a simple, you know, a simple redesign of, of that space. That's that's what the question was for the for the CPA funds. Okay, I guess I'd like to make a motion that we uh, apply for this uh, notice of intent for the Veterans Memorial. Uh, and, if they, yeah. and if they'll accept both, it doesn't seem doesn't okay. seem like you should keep the cemetery folks from applying if you're allowed no. to send in two. But it uh, sounds like our priority might be this because of the timeliness yeah. with our uh, 250th anniversary right. coming up, yeah. and I think that makes perfect sense because. The cemetery commission. It was. It's been an ongoing project for them. Right? They've applied right. several and times. It's going to continue to be and ongoing. Will, it's going to be. That's a long project. Right. Thank you. Okay, we have a second. second. Yeah. For second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Thank you, Jim. All set. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Going back to six forty-five appointment. Uh, right on time. Yeah. That's right. Hey, six forty-five. Uh, Judy, uh, you're going to talk about uh, the marijuana bylaw changes. You guys have copies of the proposed? Yeah. Uh, it's something called application for permit, right. special permit or no, 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 no. The fine agricultural and table use of incorporate used to incorporate the state. Right past the grade stones, and this is the next thing. Yeah. After that, recommended right changes that. to waiver zoning bylaws. Because Jim, Judy was. Here. Have one in color. It'll make it easier. It's not this. Oh, we've got there it is. That's it. Page, yeah. 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 Okay. This was the in color. Right. From right. right. Okay. Wait. What did it's you? The same what thing you? in color. So oh. See. Oh, this is an addition. It speaks a thousand words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is different. Circle for the packet. This, this well, doesn't this. have. It's just that has the deletions. The packet one is just <coughs> the end result. Thank you. Okay. Um, Before you get started, could you explain what RMD and ORMD and DHP stand for? I okay, I'll get there. What I would really like to do is step okay. back a bit first, even okay. beyond that, because I think it might might um, be helpful to know what we're not proposing as well as what we are. Okay. If you've been reading the papers, you see that other towns are proposing moratoria on recreational marijuana and um, limits on dispensaries or, or new sales outlets, etc. cetera. Um, some people are having ballots on whether they want to sell or not. And you're not seeing anything like that from the planning board now. And that's one, because this town voted for recreational marijuana. Two, because we have so few commercial spaces available in town that it didn't seem necessary to limit the number of. Too few, I might add, but that's. Well, I agree with you, there. too few. And we have a very comprehensive medical marijuana bylaw that we think will tide us over for a while. And mostly because the zoning issues for this town are not about selling marijuana, it's about growing it. Cultivation is, is the issue that we think from the planning board's perspective is big. And but you would, this wouldn't be excluding no. retail sale, you're just focused right now on we don't. We think the current zoning is quite adequate. Okay. For retail sales, it will limit it to commercial districts with a special permit. It, it applies to medical marijuana, but the zoning is written so that it would work for recreational as well. But you know, nothing's going to really happen for many months. Um, our concern on the planning board is cultivation. Uh, the whole town is zoned agricultural by right. We, I don't know, probably, <laughs> there's some things you don't want to know about, and one of them is, is zoning and, and exemptions and the like, but most agriculture is exempt from local zoning. Uh, 
controlled by a state exemption. In December, the legislator voted to exclude marijuana from that. So for the purpose of the state exemption, marijuana is not agriculture and we can have local zoning uh, restrictions on that. So what, we don't know how to do this yet for recreational marijuana because the regulations aren't out. They won't be out till March. If it looks like medical marijuana, you almost have to grow that in a warehouse. And our bylaws are written so that it goes to the industrial districts because of the security and <coughs> the controls over the specificity <coughs> that you have to grow, it has to really be grown indoors in a big building. Um, we don't know what the recreational stuff is going to look like. We don't know whether it will be the sort of thing that you grow in greenhouses, in fields. I mean, I think most of us think it will be in, unlikely to be outdoors, but but there are some people. We don't know what the security constraints will be. For medical marijuana, they're, they're huge. You have to have lights all around the perimeter. You can't screen it. Um, so with zoning, you're always balancing the right of one property owner is against another. And you're trying to do the best for both. So hopefully, once the regulations come out, we'll be able to try to come up with some regulations that really work to allow cultivation while protecting the butters with, you know, maybe with screening, setbacks, whatever. But we can't do it now. So what we are doing and trying to do is to update the current bylaws to get across this idea that, hey, Marijuana is not agriculture, so that the local farmers are aware of that. But we could, the state law allows us to, by town code, say that no, we've decided it is agriculture. You could, and Deerfield did that. Right, because last time I checked, it's grown you know, with seeds and soil and water, which is the same way that you, you know, grow it in your corn. Yep, we could. If we say that it's agriculture, then you could put Costco sized box stores over every field in Waitley and we couldn't stop it. Well, but that depends upon the security regulations. It depends, no. If, if it is defined as agriculture, we can't control anything. So it could be grown across the streets and here in all the buildings if you want. And you have no way to protect the butters. Have no way to protect the butters. But butters. Can, but but if the state says you it, you still require X Y and Z security measures, that supersedes the agricultural piece. Okay, but but a box store has plenty of security. Now the problem is if if we define it as agriculture, we can't screen the butters. We can't protect them from lights. We can't. We have limited control over setbacks. We have great difficulty getting in, in runoff, water control. So um, I, I am very, very surprised that some local towns have done that because I think they're, I, I think they have chosen growth over, over a balanced approach. Mm -hmm. What would be the difference between someone wanting to grow marijuana and someone wanting to open a distillery? I mean, you have a butter's issues, you have all the same issues. You have all the same issues. But it strikes me that, and again, I, I, I'm just looking at this from, from, from let's, be, let's be fair here. It strikes me that we are placing a higher level of 
what's the word I'm looking for? We haven't done this Control, I understand that. But we're looking to place a higher level of control over one legal vice more than another legal vice. Well, you you raised a ticklish issue because yeah. we have been concerned for some time that there are a lot of businesses that are, quote, farm businesses that maybe aren't. And, and that's a whole other issue. Um, but what we can do is operate within the limits that the state has given us to operate under. Yeah, I'm struggling though, Jean, because... You're ahead of us because we're not there yet. I, 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 well, but, but, but I, I get it. But we also, we do know certain things. Let, let's say that, that we have very entrepreneurial, farm, entrepreneurial farmers in town. We know that Whaley grows a tremendous number of potatoes. We know, and I'm doing a hypothetical here, we know that one of the main ingredients in vodka are potatoes. So if all of a sudden someone wanted to, instead of selling all their potatoes to Lay's, so we can sit on the couch and eat potato chips. That potato farmer is now going to start to. They're going to build a distillery and they're going to use the potatoes for distilling vodka. That's agricultural. Yeah, but you don't. You're not. You have to build a building around the potatoes and have the potatoes grown indoors. I, I get that. Okay, so yeah. so and, and and it's not alcohol until it. <clears throat> goes into processed. the distillery and gets processed, whereas marijuana, the you know, the raw materials are the things that are causing the security problem that we're but that we have but we have farmers in town who have very large warehouse looking buildings to grow raspberries and and, and, and sprouts and all these kinds of things. Same, and, and, same we, thing. and, and we have no control over whether you know, she's but that's so what she's just pointing out that it's a legal substance. And and that so any of the farmers could grow this. Who would not? But the thing we don't we have, have, have to go to a special permit. Any? No, we can't. You can't require them to even if it not still is not agricultural. What? What? Who is them? I'm sorry. Well, let's say Norris wants comes to the planning board and says, "I have a state license. Could I get a special permit to grow marijuana in my secure warehouse?" It's still not agricultural. It's, he's just looking for. He'd have to go to the ZBA. You know, the whole process. Permit, yeah. But and, and I'm not saying I'm against any of you. There are differences between. Okay, marijuana this is and other this is the discussion we want to have next year when we propose a recreational marijuana bylaw. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing at the moment is amending our medical marijuana bylaw. <laughs> yeah. So it is. If it's not agriculture, is there another term for that? What is? Well, it's medical. At the medical. it's marijuana. It's it's cultivation of marijuana. Um, there, for your um, your RMD is a retail medical dispensary, and an okay. ORMD is a off-site off-site uh, registered med. I'm sorry, registered medical dispensary. And ORMD is an off-site registered me medical dispensary. RMD is something that can either grow, process, or sell marijuana. An off-site registered me medical dispensary can only sell it. Okay. And you could just probably help me. Okay. This is the way this this medical the state medical marijuana medical marijuana law is very cumbersome. Um, and RMDs are only permitted by right in the industrial zone. Um, ORMDs and not any place else. ORMDs are permitted with a special permit in commercial and commercial industrial and by right in industrial. So you could under our medical marijuana bylaw you could 
you could sell in the commercial area with a special permit. You could grow and sell. You can grow in the industrial zone. You, can, you can't grow in the commercial. So we could sell here in this building. Right. You got yeah. Sandy Lane. That's it. Or you can always expand the industrial zone yeah. in the town. Right. Yeah. So the the, the the warehouse farms that exist in Waitley would not be able to grow medical marijuana. No. See, and I worry that we're limiting. By special permit. No, I thought no, you said no, they could no. get industrial zone. And I worry that we're limiting our farmers' ability to be on. Okay. Well, I think what we intend to do is come back next, probably next fall, with a complete rewrite of this whole thing once we have the recreational marijuana. And you do medical and recreational in the same. They way. will be put together. The the recreational marijuana, but legislation essentially wiped out the medical one once it gets going the and this the only reason we are doing this now is to clarify it make it easier to understand and also to sort of flag to farmers that at the moment anyway um, you're going to need a special permit and unfortunately the delay because Judy's right the delays are that I, I worry that we're creating delays that will essentially make it impossible for a farmer to ever get into the game because basic economics, you know, supply and demand, they're going to be so far behind other places that they're going to they're be shut out of the game. Nobody can even apply for a license until there, June. But there are medical marijuana facilities that have received in Plainfield, they're moving forward already. Was there one next door, next town too, being proposed? The airfield's got something yeah. going. I think they've run some roadblocks, but that's. Yeah. But that's a dispenser. That's a selling. That's place. a dispenser. The playing field has, has so. I don't think there's anywhere near enough actual growing facilities to, to deal with. With the cultivation demand, and. There won't be, and, you know, Brian will tell you. Nobody, but in Whateley and Deerfield, maybe, if some of the farm communities, anybody even talking about cultivation regulations, it's, it's kind of, it's all about selling. That's, yeah, that's the bulk. Just a matter of interest, in today's paper, the Department of Agriculture has posted a job for an agriculture inspector for cannabis. So at least the Department of Agriculture is getting involved. You mean the state? Yeah, the State yes. Department of Agriculture posted a job. Oh. Uh, huh? Okay. But, but you, yeah, I put in my application. As long as we, I know, personally, we're going to move as fast as we can. Right, but we're going to revisit this as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, I mean, we would. I would love to have something for April, but the regs aren't. Even the preliminary regs aren't going to be out till March. March twenty-eighth. So do we need this now? Do we even need to address it? We would like to address it because it clarifies it. It makes our position um, more legal and because we really want the, the farmers to be aware of this. And if they want to get involved and change the whole shooting match, and, and then they can do that. They, they can do it. We would like to start. We have a whole community of farmers that's not used to thinking about zoning at all. Right. And part of this exercise is to, is to get them involved. But should we wait until annual meeting to do this? This is, you're proposing for a special meeting. It doesn't time. change. The reason, the reason we're proposing. This isn't making changes. The reason we're proposing this is because the, there's no effective change to what you can do. It's just clarification. It's just a definitional thing. I don't care about that. But if you, but, uh, we would like, is, we is want to get the definitional right. thing out so we can make, it, it's one way to make the community, the farm community more aware of, of the issue and what's going on. And they'll hopefully encourage them to get involved yes. so we can write something that works for everybody. That's, that's the intent. That, I'm good with that. Okay, but if you want the farm community involved, it's, we have we have already had a a strategy discussion with the conservation commission and the ag commission. We're starting the process. 
we think having it at a special town meeting will encourage that and we want to we want to move forward so actually we, we do think it's important to do now okay now you had a, I suppose a public hearing on this was it yesterday or two yesterday days? did you get any of the farmers that nobody you? came nobody came i think it's not controversial or they didn't understand what it was. Or they didn't understand. Or they didn't know that it was happening. Yeah. Nobody knew what those initials were unless you were researched. When, when, when was this? Yesterday. I, I'll admit, where's the sword that I can fall on? I have no idea what this was. It was, was on our web. It was on our website, right? Cal on our calendar. Well, right? Okay, but let's assume, uh, for the sake of argument, that very few people actually look at the website. Well, was it in the newspaper? Advertising. It, it was, it was legal ads. Legal ad, yeah, it was legal ad in the paper. Yeah. Right. I, I guess, but we all know that getting the word out. Well, that's one reason I'm here. Right. I didn't have to come. What's that? Uh, we yeah, I get, and I, I appreciate it. I, I just, I, mean, okay, yeah. but, but I am here to start trying to spread right. the word. Let's but, get a robocall out on this. Well, I guess my concern, <laughs> is, again, is, is going back I think to having it on this on the special town meeting agenda. We'll do a lot for that. Yeah, it, it, it may. I, I think you're going to get more people, more, say, in the farming community out at the annual meeting rather than a no. special. Because no, typically no. we We want them meeting. involved before then, please, Fred, because well, we would like them to start paying attention to right. the guidelines and, and maybe even going out to some of the public meetings with the, with the campus this, commission. So does what this affect our local farmers? Or no. Or? no. This change doesn't affect them at all. Right. Down the road. Yeah. No, down the road. But this doesn't, to Judy's point, it's clarity. That's all it does. Right. Yeah. So what would, would you be proposing, proposing something else for the annual town meeting? No, that's because still too we early? have, but the timing of the guidelines is very unfortunate for from it's really yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's re That was discussed in a meeting that we, had, that, that, I mean, that we ran. That the first thing you, you read on any, anything is the calendar is awful for Green Municipality. It's essentially teeing things up for big business. Yeah. Okay. Really? Our state does that? <laughs> right, that was supposed to stay in my thought. And, and I don't say that critically of big business. I just, I just, it's teeing it up. It, it's, it's very exclusionary, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so, so Brian, what do we need to do here? We need to. Uh, this is just for yeah. you will it will be on the warrant yeah. you need to approve it. This is informational. For you. Okay. Okay. And I think Ryan has some other I don't know maybe this is um, time. So I think we'll probably talk about it uh, at a different meeting, but um, one of the other items we need to consider Bob oh, that we need to consider is whether we want to you can we can let me start again. Towns can impose an additional excise tax above and beyond what the state imposes on marijuana. I vote yes. So on both the growth and the retail sales. sale. That's the bugaboo. It's it way just too close to 20 million in wholesale. I'm not sure that's taxable. I think it's the retail, the it's way it's retail presently it's worded. Taxable. So, it's it, a sales tax. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's some. Sales. We don't have if we, if we there's don't a sales tax. On, if, you, if you go sell a potato, there's a sales tax. Yeah, this is an addition. This is a local option. Well, actually, so not. I think I'm back. So, yeah. yeah, isn't it? Yeah, this is something. And so far, my understanding is it, it's only on retail. Is that right. Brian? Yeah. But, but the reason that I don't, and because it's on agricultural, it may, it, I think it probably should. Well, it's a whole. But we, we don't tax food because it's a necessity. If I'm hard pressed with the marijuana is a necessity. If somebody were interested in, say, renting the Sugarloaf shops for a for a marijuana sales outlet, it would probably behoove them. They would probably like to know what the town's yeah. sales tax would be. Yeah, we like oh, yeah. money. Yeah. We do, we do. Okay, we bring so, more youth to the town. So I think, well, and I'm not putting words in Judy's mouth, but I think we're proposing that we put this on the warrant that we yeah. go for yeah. a local option sales tax of three percent. All the other time, be get it in place. I otherwise, I think we'll be behind the eight ball. And maybe can't put it in place. Which town meeting do we put that on? Is it more appropriate for an annual town meeting? No, 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 no. Because it doesn't make any changes. It's just no, the sales tax. No, the sales, the sales tax. tax. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Well, but I. But to the point, we we want to get information out there. 
Yeah. And we want to be ahead of the curve. Right. And but we haven't done any research in terms of what other people are doing. We want this well, has no, to be competitive. No, there's plenty. Uh, Northampton just passed it. Amherst just passed it. Deerfield had passed it a year yeah, ago. What? Three percent. Three percent. Everybody is going to max. Everybody's going to max. Are going, going three. Yeah. But I'd further propose that the select board send a letter to the cannabis commission so that we can tax our wholesalers. Because I think that's where the bulk's going to come out of Whaley. I agree. Three percent of sixty million is a pretty good number. Well, I actually think that. And I don't know what our capacity is, but I actually think that it would be very cool for Waitley, and I'm happy to drive this from the Select Board Association as well, but for Waitley to host a commission hearing here in Waitley, because the hearings that they have taken place up till now have been in Cities. more urban areas, you know, the Springfields, the Hoyles, and that, that makes sense, the population's there. But we're representing the agricultural piece of this, and that, you know, I don't know how many farmers have shown up to those, those hearings in a more urban location. And if we could, you know, what's the capacity of, of the school? Well, yeah, or would it be better for FERCOT to do that? No. Could be in Greenfield. No, it would, no. Yeah. It, it would be better if, 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 yeah. if We've, and and we've taken the lead on other things in this and, respect. And, and we should. So, what, what is the what, what, How many people can you put in the school? Is it 200 max or something? Oh, no. Annual town meeting. We, we fit three, 400 people. No, no. Well, we don't get those kind of people at annual town that. meeting choice. We get about a buck 25. No, no, we, no, but we, no, we have had larger numbers and we fit them in the gym. I'm, I'm, you asked a numbers question and yeah. your numbers person right. is sitting right here and it gave you a number. Uh, okay, I so if we okay. can, I, I think we should do that. I, I think we should too. You seem and to have the out. contacts to, to try and make it happen. What's that? You seem to have the contacts to try and make it happen. I have nothing else in life. Okay. okay. So are we going to take a vote on this or? Is well, we don't, I don't think we have to for right. this current thing. He wants the sales no, tax. No, no, for the meeting. Oh. He wants the sales tax on the warrant in December. Oh, in December? Oh, no. Uh, I, I actually have no problem with it. We can always change it down the road. Are we ready yeah. to do that? Let me ask Brian, are we ready I, to do that? Or let, let me ask you this. I'm ready. I can write I, the wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Again, under the under the hat of competition. Everyone else around us has done three percent. Um, let's do five. No, let's do two point five or two point five. <laughs> I mean, so we're we're seriously. Why why wouldn't we take advantage of it? because then we're competing with Towns that have a, a, a greater critical mass, they've got employees, they have, have employees who aren't, well, everyone, all the employees are overextended, but let's give ourselves some competitive edge if you think this is a viable economic develop, piece of economic development. The point to keep in mind is that this is really supposed to be paying for security. Oh, I and think you can pay for a lot more than that. Um, a lot, yeah. But I just, just well, I, I think, I think the, the dialogue should you reflect know, that. I, you know, but, but honestly, the state limits how we can raise money yeah. so much mm -hmm. that if we ever get any chance to raise money by some method, we should do it. Right. We should just absolutely do it. I mean, and then the meals tax did not scare away people from the Waitley Inn or from the diner. Um, I, I don't. I. And, I, and we, we, we need the local revenue, and it's not like we're trying to put a casino in I make a motion that we set a tax rate at 2.5% for any marijuana sales that we, can, that, we can, that we can have, and that would include wholesale at some point down the road. You got that, Brian? At some point down the road, I don't know if that's... <laughs> that's, the, that's the legal that's term. Whenever term. it should legal become term. legit. Right. Legal. Just, you know the legal terms, right? Yeah, I don't know if, <laughs> to your point about the state restricting yeah. control of what we can raise taxes over. I'm not sure. Well, that but we know that we can do taxes included. over what Amherst and Northampton always already have. We'll have to look at the language. Right. So 2.5%. 
it, I think it, I think town council might have a little problem with voting something that's not legal. But correct. I don't understand why it's not legal. The wholesale. The wholesale part. part. The wholesale oh, okay. Part. Then eliminate the wholesale part for a second. We can revisit that. That should be a topic at your. It should be at your your other meeting. Two point five percent retail. Our reporter left. He needs a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why not three? I don't want to argue okay. about it right now. So okay. I'm not. Because it's going to be sure to little shops. And no, we, next we don't have to approve the yeah. warrant until when? Next meeting. Next meeting. So we've got to next meeting to figure that out. Correct. Yeah. So this is something you this want to do. Like, I feel like it just got sprung on me. That's and I haven't really point. had time to think fair about point. it. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I'm not seconding it right now. Okay. But I'm going to make a motion next Reset meeting. Reset it. And I'll be prepared. Okay. That's fair. Okay. Moving on. Please. Uh, we talked about the students today. Uh, Can we go back to for, to the steering committee for one second and see if. Okay. Yeah. This. So was it wasn't so I heard I, I heard I missed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did earlier. Uh, hey, you did a good job for me. I said you were coming. Oh, God, did you come? Keith voted you in charge. That's oh, no, right. No, 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 no. And it didn't, I think we gave her, like, how much in a budget? Oh, you got me money? I think you were going to pay us. I, I think you were going to pay us. Though. That was probably. I know we tabled the demo. The future. No. Well, we're going to look at it. At making but, the, uh, the committee more official. Right, that Brian is the first was, step. Brian was going to look at whether it had to go to town meeting to establish a committee. That could have a budget and spend money. Right. But we can so continue to have a budget. There's an ad hoc. Well, right. Too much it, ad hoc. And the point that I made is there are a lot of committees and commissions in town where we don't pay anybody to take minutes. And if we suddenly allow somebody to do that and just say, yes, of course you should, it will be precedent setting. And so it's not just the the, the cost of paying someone to take minutes for this special uh, commission, it, it, there will be a snowball effect and every commission will want to do it. And so the cost will be more than just 25 bucks a month. The, I, I understand that the thought behind having someone take minutes though wasn't for someone specifically to take minutes at our monthly meetings. It's that there are going to be some committees set up each will with a different task arranging you know the dance and the barbecue with you know, all of these different events and not that i expect a secretary to take minutes at all of the subcommittee meetings but it's more a matter of consolidating all of the information so if every subcommittee submits its minutes it's somebody to keep keep records across the board of everything that's done both for this process and also for reference for 50 years from now. Because we find ourselves, we keep saying, so what happened back in the 71, you know? And it would be so nice to have that sort of documentation, but it's not, you know, don't think of it as taking minutes at a meeting like this. Think of it as consolidating minutes from you know, 10 subcommittees. Okay, we're going to look further into that okay. and discuss it in the upcoming meetings. So. Okay, uh, turn all project update, Brian. Or are you going to thank you go over these items here? Quickly. Yeah. Um, so, so for just an update, the contractor has started uh, the work on the town hall project, um, and one of the things we need to clarify is. Um, change orders and who has the authority to sign change orders. Um, oh, the clerk of works. And um, would that be? Who would that um, be? And uh, is, there, is there certain, obviously minor change orders in, in terms of keeping the project moving? Um, does the board want to sign every single change order? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's probably a threshold somewhere over a dollar figure where you would yeah. want um, um, yeah. to yeah. have you some sort of to be able to say, "Oh, I can't do that." And I don't know what that I don't know what that is. If you, if you have any thoughts? Yeah. Well, no, but it came up at our building committee meeting, and and it was decided there wouldn't it wasn't necessary to have a dollar figure because it it could change and it may not be meaningful to the extra work so 
was hard to identify what that dollar figure was, so we didn't specify it. But if there's a change order that's going to cost us $25,000. Well, yeah, a large change order is, depending on the nature of what it's for, I mean, yeah. But that's sort of it the could point. Come, yeah, it could come back to, to the select board here. Well, that's, but you got to put a dollar figure on that. Well. Otherwise. But, you, but then you, you could have uh, five change orders for 5000 and you're, you're talking the same amount. You put the number 5000 How many change orders are we talking about? We don't about? know. We don't know. We don't know. Just looking forward into the project. Just looking into the project. I, I think for the time being, then, we should have change orders come here. And if they become, this is a ridiculous thing that we're discussing, then we can make the change. But we have no historical context to this yet. Okay, the, the problem with, with change orders coming here, it's you got to wait two weeks for, for approval. And if they're sitting there waiting in the middle of something and want to act on it and it costs X dollars more, I guess we need to decide soon whether they go ahead with that or not. There's got to be some cost control. 